सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली ऑन पॉपुलर डिमांड इन फैक्ट ऑन वाइड पॉपुलर डिमांड दिस एपिसोड ऑफ कट द्लेटर ऑन द फिच down rating or downgrading of america downgrading from triple a that is the highest level of rating by fitch to aa plus double a plus that's also a high rating but the mighty us has been downgraded or downrated now this has caused a lot of chuckles across the world a lot of schadenfreude remember fitch is an american agency so to that extent even the americans now can't go around saying that some foreign agency is being unfair to us it's an american agency so an american agency so first of all it's also a complement to the system where these agencies these organizations are able to work freely so freely that they can downrate their own sovereign which is what they have done now that has happened in america but that is not the only story in fact when this happened initially i thought it's not such a big deal right uh, america has been downrated in the past in fact standard and poor which if anything has carries greater weight in the ratings business standard and poor down rated america from triple a to double a plus in 2011 12 years ago and since then they have not restored that triple a rating to america so it's not as if america has been in trouble for the past 12 years it's not even as if more and more countries have not been putting more, putting more and more of their reserves in us treasury bills because that is where everybody the sovereigns across the world look for safety including importantly including china and india as well so sovereigns across the world where do i put my reserves i go to the safest place it's my people's money so go to us treasury bonds so that hasn't been affected so much by the standard and poor down rating of 2011 so i thought then why would fitch matter now but what's happened is but this is geopolitically a different world this is a very different world from what it was in 2011 and that's why when we look at this situation you have to see the down rating in america then you have to see this the currents in the middle east now the middle east is all supplier to the whole world so if something happens in america there are currents and there are simmerings in the middle east and then there is action in china because china is now rising as not just the second largest economy but a very powerful economy and it has something that the american system doesn't have maybe to a fault american system is chaotic to a fault it it lacks coherence to a fault in fact that's one of the reasons that fitch notes for its down rating i will list some of those main reasons as we go along the chinese on the other hand have no such thing as incoherence or debate or chaos chinese have total coherence maybe too much coherence but at a time when the leading economy and the leading power of the world has too little of something if its challenger has the virtue that the leader lacks then it's not seen as too much at least by those that don't live in that country and that is mainly powers in the middle east oil powers in the middle east so that is where a new thing is happening the middle eastern countries and the Chi- and the chinese are encouraging it they are dealing with china in yuan and vice versa china would love to deal with them in yuan and that is leading to de-dollarization some de- to some degree a small degree not very much to some degree but and mark this very carefully but mostly in the middle east almost entirely in the middle east because we know that iran is a country which has been sub- subject to american sanctions so they can't do business in dollar anyway so they've been dealing with china uh, in the in, in chinese yuan and so are the other middle eastern countries now so if you want to understand this perspective bet- better i will share with you a link of a paper title the state of de-dollarization in the gulf region it's a july 2023 publication in the strategic government series published by the experts of international institute for strategic studies in london in fact long time back 30 years back i used to be a research associate at the same institute and later served on the council of the institute for 
nine years, three terms of three years each. This particular episode or this particular installment of strategic comments is available on a free to read basis. So please do read it. That gives, gives you a very good background. Now, I started out with the Fitch down rating of America and I moved on to the Middle East and China. That is how interconnected this world is. Let me talk a little bit more about geopolitics before I come back to the Fitch down rating because I know that's also a juicy subject. Well, many people enjoy the idea because even in India, we chafe over the fact that ratings agencies are unfair to us. The rate is much too low. We've never had a default. When we were likely to have a default, we even sent our gold out to make sure there is no default. We are not Pakistan. We are not Sri Lanka. So why treat us like that? So there is a certain degree of schadenfreude in India as well. Look, son. America ko bhi mara, aap log bhi downgrade hue, aapki agencies humko downgrade karti hai. That's the reason I said early on that they've been downgraded by their own agency. That said, look at the geopolitics. If you look at the geopolitics, see the Gulf states. In March 2023, the Chinese said that they are now transacting all their purchases, all their purchases of liquefied natural gas, LNG, and the Chinese consume a lot of it. All their purchases of LNG from the Middle East in Yuan without converting it to the dollar as used to be the case earlier. Iran, as I mentioned to you, already is, is not able to transact in dollars, so they are transacting in Yuan anyway. What this does is, this is now shaking the old compact between the Middle East and America, particularly the Saudi Arabia and America. That is the Oil for Security Compact. In 1973, we know there was a Yom Kippur war between the Israelis, Egyptians and some other Arab states, following which oil producing countries led by the Arab countries, mostly Muslim countries, they cartelized and OPEC then start, started setting up global oil prices and oil prices started going up. And the rest of the world that began to worry where we'll get our, get our oil from because oil producers, the biggest oil producers in the world had now cartelized and many of them had also cartelized on a political and ideological basis. These were the fully Islamic Arab states, Iran and some of the other nations as well and later as they emerged in Africa. That said, because there were a lot of concerns in 1974, in June 1974, Nixon administration and then Saudi Arabian ruler King Faisal, they signed an agreement and that agreement was called a, an oil for security agreement. What that agreement guaranteed to America and the Western world by implication was free flow of oil or petroleum to the US in exchange for exports of American arms to Saudi Arabia and also American security guarantees, American protection guarantees. That's the reason it was called oil for security deal. And that's how the idea and concept of petrodollars also came in. In 1986, the Saudi Arabian administration following up on the 1974 spirit because this relationship is now expanding. Saudi forces are using a lot of the American equipment. In fact, almost entirely American equipment. In 1986, they link Saudi Rial to the dollar. They peg Saudi Rial to the dollar and also they buy a large amount of American treasury bonds, American T bonds. So once again, they become part of the American led economic system. Then lately, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, strains have come in. And where have these strains come from? First of all, there's a fear. The fear is if sanctions can be used to throttle Russian oil supplies like this, to fix a price of Russian oil, which is now $60. Why can't these countries at some point conceivably use the same power of sanctions to fix the price of all our oil as well? That means OPEC in that case will be completely undermined and the big powers of the West will then, or big powers of the West plus other big consumers, maybe even India, they will get together and determine a price of oil. So OPEC's power of determining the price of oil, influencing the price of oil, we are producing that many more barrels in case the price goes up too much, or we are now cutting down production in case the price goes too, too low, that power will go away. So that is, that is one big insecurity. The next factor is the pull and the push that the Middle Eastern countries, the Gulf countries are now getting from China to move away from the dollar. So China is encouraging as they must, in their own interest, as they should, as you would expect, 
they are encouraging de-dollarization. So the Chinese now have their own exchange. That, that is the Shanghai Petroleum and Natural Gas Exchange, which transacts business only in Yuan. Chinese also have their system to rival the American-led SWIFT, S-W-I-F-T, right? That is what their sanctions cut Russians away from. So, so the Chinese have their own system called SIPS, C-I-P-S, that stands for Cross-Border Interbank Payment System. Now, SIPS is what the Chinese are offering to the Arab countries as an alternative to SWIFT because the Arab countries also worry because they also do funny things all the time and they think that at some point the Americans or the Western world could sanction us also and cut us off, off from SWIFT. So what will happen? Because they've seen what happens when, when you are dependent on one system. So the Chinese have said, don't worry so much about only being dependent on SWIFT. Stay on with SWIFT if you choose to. At the same time, I am giving you an alternative. So move some of your stuff here. So tomorrow, if you are blocked away from SWIFT, then you have a safe harbor. Come to SIPS. I've got SIPS for you running under my care and that is not affected by any sanctions. Already, 167 countries are transacting business on SIPS and 3,000 banking institutions as well. SWIFT, on the other hand, is much bigger than SIPS. Obviously, SWIFT has 200 countries. It has 11,000 banking institutions compared to 3,000 of China's SIPS. It also has 42 million transactions a day. So it's very big. So it's not as if SIPS has now become an alternative, but SIPS is now pretending to provide an alternative because everybody is concerned about the power of sanctions. And that's why Saudi Minister Mohammad Al Jadan has been quoted as saying, and I quote, there are no issues in discussing how we settle our trade. It can be in US dollars, Euro, Rial, anything. On top of all this, See the other development of great geopolitical importance to India as, as well. And India is worried. In fact, India is trying the best possible to try and block it diplomatically. But it's a very awkward situation because Saudi Arabia is a key friend of India. That is, the Chinese are now pushing Saudi Arabians to get full membership at BRICS. Now, Saudi Arabia comes to BRICS. That's a major Islamic country. UAE also comes to BRICS. Once that happens, then under Chinese influence, India becomes even more marginal. India is already marginal in BRICS and Shanghai Cooperation Organization. That's something we've spoken about several times in the past. And we've said, what sense does it make for India to sit on a table where China has a permanent position at the head of the table? Now, one of those institutions, BRICS, is what China is trying to expand. And they are trying to get Saudi Arabia into it and UAE into it. India doesn't want it. So in some whispers, India has been suggesting that this should be for democratic countries and all that. But if it's for democratic countries, what is China doing there? So if China can be there, so can Saudi Arabia be there. So these are awkward situations for India that China has created. But China is using this new power in the Middle East. And this new distancing, it's not really a substantive distancing, but it's this tactical distancing of the Middle East from the Americans right now. So there is a space available and China is moving in there. Now, as I promised you, I'm coming back also to why has Fitch downrated America? So I will just list the highlights. Number one, Fitch predicts that over the next three years, there will be fiscal deterioration in America. Fiscal deterioration over the next three years. Number two, debt burden limitation has been suspended till June 2025. It has got bipartisan approval, which means once restrictions on the increase in debt burden have been suspended, debt burden will keep on going up. There is no restriction on it. There will be less discipline. There is less expectation of discipline. Fitch also says, and it's, it's an American company, Fitch also says that there's been a deterioration in governance in America in the past 20 years. So if you go back 20 years, we are starting with sort of Clinton II through the two terms of Bush, Junior Bush, and then on to Obama and Trump and now Biden. So deterioration in governance in America over the past 20 years. Then they say that now increased Medicare and social spending will again lead to more deficit and more borrowing debt to GDP ratio by 2025, which predicts will be 118.4%. 
in America, 118.4 percent. That's very high. Now, for comparisons, if you want to look at the average, the mean of all other countries that are rated triple A by Fitch, all other countries, their average of debt to GDP ratio is 39.3 percent. So, 39.3 percent compared to 118.4 percent is almost three times. That's a very bad situation and that is what Fitch is responding. Next, which follows I think from point two where they say there's been deterioration in governance in the past 20 years. They say there is reduced credibility of American system, American governance. There is also lesser coherence in governance, policy making and dollar dominance across the world is also declining. Next point they say that in the American system, there are last minute standoffs in Congress on the hill. So a lot of decisions get held up. Obviously, such things don't, don't happen in China, can't happen in China. But they say such things also happen much less in Europe. So in comparison, America is doing very badly. As you would expect, US government has reacted very sharply. The White House spokesperson herself has spoken out saying that this is, we, we condemn this rating, this is nonsensical. Nonsensical is not her word, it's mine. But that's what, that's the implication. But he's condemned it and said that in fact, the model Fitch is using to determine a country's rating, in this case, their own country's rating, America's rating, that model had deteriorated under Trump. The situation had deteriorated under Trump and under Biden, if anything, that situation has improved greatly. Also, it's pointed out by White House that under Biden, American economy has staged the, staged the strongest recovery of any major economy. Fitch, on the other hand, believes that inflation has still not go gone away and at least one more round of rate hikes will come from the US Fed. Further, Fitch predicts that there will be a mild recession in America in fourth quarter of 2023. That's the last quarter of this calendar year. And also the first quarter, going into the first quarter of 2024. In fact, just two weeks back, US Fed in its policy statement, it said that there is no possibility now of a recession in the foreseeable future. As that happened, I found a lot of commentary, not just on social media, but also on American media from American commentators that now that the Fed has said that there is no possibility of a, of a recession, it's most likely that a recession will actually take place. Because, you know, sometimes, sometimes central banks are a bit like weather forecasters. When they say it will rain, it doesn't rain. When they say it won't rain, it rains. So that skepticism remains. Fitch, on the other hand, believes that yes, there will be a recession. Now, just as an instance, I will also list some countries which are triple A rated. Not all of them, but some. You can then get an idea as to what kind of countries are these. That's Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, Denmark, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Singapore, Australia. Still, these are countries which are triple A rated and America now doesn't measure up to them for the many reasons that Fitch has mentioned. Now you might ask me, what kind of implication has it had in India? I know if you've been following the markets or if you just watch our channels, TV channels, newspapers, you know that Indian stock markets received this news very badly. Many other markets, particularly in Asia, that's Hong Kong, Tokyo, Australia, Korea, they all fell. But the American markets, the American markets fully took it in their stride. Why? Because they know exactly how the situation is in America and they have accounted for this. But why did these Asian markets fall and particularly why did the Indian market fall? That is because after this down rating, yields on American bonds went up. As yields on American bonds went up, we've explained this many times to you, when yields on bonds go up, bond prices come down. As bond prices come down, it also becomes more remunerative for a lot, a lot of investors to go and buy those bonds because one, immediate yield is higher and second, the prices are now lower. And that's why markets like India, which depend a great deal on buyers from overseas, from overseas investors who bring in the dollar to buy Indian equity. Then there are concerns that they will instead use the same money to buy American bonds. And that's why India will attract less money will come to India. And truth to tell, if this situation continues, they might find it more lucrative, more worth their while to pull money out of Indian markets and take it away and invest in safer, and relatively higher yielding as in American bonds relative to 
what they were yielding earlier. So some of these foreign investors might prefer to park their money there. It's a temporary concern. All experts are writing and saying it's a temporary concern and in India, if anything. And that's what Radhika Pandey, a sort of resident economist, has also written in her, in her column, Macro Sutra. In India, we should watch not what Fitch has said about America, but what RBI is going to say on August 10th when they come up with the next statement on interest rates or monetary policy.